to be the man. You got to beat the man. This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes. Where is he? Cactus Jack. Your arms are just too short to box with God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Heels podcast, episode 22. Fuck the revival. We took a week off and now I'm off. No, no, my, my brain's off. This might be episode 23. 20-something. 20 Tell me in the comments. <laughs> Hopefully I'll have figured it out by then. <laughs> no, we won't, so we tell won't. us. Comment, like, subscribe. You can find me at... Oh, we're not doing that yet. You can dislike if you want to. I don't give a fuck. Just leave a comment and like and subscribe. Or, no, you have to subscribe and leave a comment. Let us know why you disliked, at least. Don't be an asshole and just dislike. They're going to be an asshole just dislike. Just subscribe. <laughs> don't give a shit. That's what a future heel will do. Yeah. That's what I do. I do it all the time. So we took a week off, and Brooks has decided to take another week off. Yeah. He had some stuff to do. So it was another two-man podcast. Yep. But we're at least in, you know, in the big the big mansion, in the nice room. Yeah, we're not we're, in the little garage. Yeah, where there's no air conditioning. So yeah, because that's terrible. Off. Yeah, because we are... I'm off all day, so I'm glad I'm not... I'm glad I'm in the AC now. We are in Florida where there's just too much heat. We have too much heat here. If you want some, come get some. Yeah, like, as the Rock would say. It's like 100 degrees today. It I don't was, know if that's accurate, but... It was, it was pretty high. I'm sure the, the feels-like temperature <laughs> was... Ate that crap. I mean, I get it, but it was probably around 100, if not... It was probably, yeah, it probably was 100, 101. I believe it. Because I was out in the heat today. I was, you, oh, yeah, that's right. You're flying your drone. Yep. And it, anytime anyone crashed and they went to go get it, they would just sit there for 15 minutes after, and you're like, God, it's so hot. You guys need a golf cart. We were saying that. <laughs> I was like, we either need a golf cart, because there is like a little path out there. I mean, you guys got drones, but why don't you get one of them fucking, uh, stand on it that moves? Segways? Kinda, but just like the... Oh, the hoverboard Hoverboards, things? thank you. Jeez, I cannot think of what the fuck it was called. I was thinking maybe we can get like a Vespa. <laughs> like a Vespa style scooter and just... You yeah. already look like mega nerds. This was probably not the best of ideas. It's all you reinforce it. I mean, I don't know. You're only going to reinforce it. I mean, if that's what you're going for. Yeah, I don't care. Nerd. I'm sitting out there with my Pokemon hat and my oh, Ninja Turtle shirt on and <laughs> flying my drone. and I don't know. Drones are expensive as fuck, though, so. Yeah. Yes, they are. Kind of like a status symbol, actually. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Calm your britches. Ah, fuck, if you're wearing fat shark goggles, this is not the podcast. No, it's not. I keep but, saying that we should do another podcast to talk about this shit, but... But those goggles, by the way, are like 500 bucks. Yeah, but fuck the revival. Fuck the revival. <laughs> okay, so we Put got... Back in. We got... <laughs> we're yelling back in. Um, so we got some news to talk about, uh... Mostly WWE stuff. We did watch uh, What Culture Pro Wrestling, the Japanese qualifiers yes, uh, for the World Cup. Go watch that. It was freaking great. Every single match was solid. Oh, yeah. I mean, one botch the whole time. There was a couple. Ooh, was there? Yeah, there was really. a couple, but, I mean, they, they took care of it. Well. They recovered very well. Yeah. So I guess I didn't notice it. Um, we did have Chris Braddock here earlier. He had to yeah. take off. See, so everyone's leaving us. Yep. Um, we, we really need to have the segment of Chris Braddock's random indie gripe. Yeah. And also Chris, worst indie names with Chris Braddock. So what was that guy's name? It was like... Chris John, Carnage. Chris Carnage. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> I don't think it's bad. Not as bad so as my bad. first name. Just what? insane. Oh, yeah. Biggie B. Biggie B's awesome. Right? Yeah, that one's pretty good. Pariah before that. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was Big E B as a heel. Well, why Pariah? Huh? Why Pariah? I heard the Undertaker say it. Oh, that. I was sitting in the. It was. I was the only one there. I think I was watching SmackDown in the wrestling school, and uh, the under. I think it was the Undertaker said the said Pariah. I don't see Pariah. What? Is, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so I got up and ran behind the 
the desk and jumped on the computer and Googled it. And it's, uh, you know, someone who's been cast out and not welcome. I'm like, oh, that's me. I'm a pariah. <laughs> and, of course, that became a thing in the school is, I'm a pariah. <laughs> like, the, I'm a yeah. piranha. So, I remember that. But, yeah, I was oh, hell yeah. And I actually, I have a title belt in the garage. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Probably. But it's uh, it says Pariah across. Because that was there when you were Pariah. No, I, made, I think I made it after. Because I made it. I you made had, the title belt. I thought you guys had a title belt. No, we had the title belt. Right. I destroyed the title belt. Okay. Um, after a our final failed show. Okay, that's right. Uh, but I do have the dungeon title still that was going to replace the one I destroyed. Okay. Actually, I have a handful of title belts back there. Maybe we should post them. Yeah. Actually, I I have OG, double OG, triple OG, backyard uh-huh. wrestling title belts <laughs> from back when Is I was Is it just like, the spinner belt? Because <laughs> that's what most of them have. Wait, do I have a... I have the spinner belt. <laughs> no, I have one made out of a fucking clock. It's the Flava Flav title belt. I think it was our first belt. I think it's in there. The very first wrestling belt ever. And then I have our backyard title belt. I don't... No, not backyard. I think I have the hardcore title belt. Because the backyard one was a Halloween belt that I, I don't think I ever got my hands on. Is the hardcore belt still up for grabs? <laughs> yeah, I think it was 24 hours, too. Did I tell you... Have I told my Goldust story? I think so, but you can tell it again because it's pretty badass. Yeah, I uh, got my hardcore belt signed by Goldust, and we were taking a picture. He put his arm around me, and he says, you know that belt's rule's still in effect, or something like that. I just went, oh. <laughs> Please don't, don't shatter me. <laughs> Super nice dude, by the way. Talked to him for a little bit. Talked, I actually talked to him about him and Cody nice. wrestling. And I, one day... One day we'll get an actual feud out of that. We got Stardust and Goldust, which is okay, but yeah, I don't think that's what they wanted. I get the feeling. I don't actually know. Me and Goldust aren't best friends. I wish <laughs> you're not. No. Well, shit. Damn. I wish it... all the news just closed. All the news just came back. I don't know what's wrong with this computer. All right, as long as it keeps <laughs> okay. recording. Yeah, as long as it gets, I'm trying to check. Oh yeah, it's still recording. Okay, so let's get to the news before this computer decides it doesn't want to tell it to us anymore. Um, as, as happy as I was about this guy getting signed in NXT, Austin Aries has been released by WWE. And apparently it was by his own doing. Yeah, which is fine. Which, yeah, it kind of makes sense. They gave him a banana. What? I don't think I saw that. That was his thing, wasn't it? He had a banana. I, I don't know. You watch more 205 Live than I have. I don't know. I thought it was a thing. That Austin Aries always had a banana. I don't, I'm pretty I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'm making it up. Maybe. Maybe I'm not. My phone's dead, so I can't check. And it's not charging, by the way. That's strange. Maybe only one charges at a time. Or it's not um, charging enough to turn back on. Oh, that could be. So, yeah, Austin's been released. It was. He wanted it to happen. Uh, so, I mean, at least there's that. It's on his resume now. It is. And I'm sure, you know, hopefully he left, you know, with the door open. I hope so. But because I think he wanted to be more a part of the, the main event, the heavyweight guys, but they stuck him strictly to the cruiserweights. Yeah, which, I don't know. Is maybe... No, I don't... No, I don't either. I think he he can totally go. I mean, we know he can go with Samoa Joe and Seth Rollins and all these other guys. And yeah, we know he can't have incredible matches, and he has incredible promos. He everything is great about him. Yep. They just and... kind of squandered him a little, I guess, like they did with Chris Hero, and then he left and came back better than ever. Yeah, I saw somewhere someone somehow God, my credits are right. I give. Credit to the best people. Um, <laughs> okay. Someone was saying how they, it's not worth going 
into the WWE right now and getting lost in the shuffle. It's I want to say it was one of the Young Bucks. That's what they said. Oh, okay. I was probably going to say... They say it's probably fucking Scott Steiner or Buff Bagwell or one of them idiots. No, no. It was someone who... I, it actually makes sense. Like, you go and you you have a high risk of just being... Not as high as it used to be, though. I mean, and it depends on who you are. Look at look at the names that they have and look how they're not being used properly. 205 Live needs... Some changes. The entire roster of 205 Live, I don't think, is being used properly. Right. We have fucking Nakamura as a mid carter. Yeah. Which they're just they're pushing this whole Jinder Mahal thing. Hopefully, after this is over, I would like to see Randy win the championship. I think. I don't know. Jinder Mahal versus Shinsuke Nakamura, the championship. That'd be really interesting. So yeah, Jinder wins, defeats Randy Orton, a what, 15-time world champion, massive star, and then obviously Jinder's now solidified and he drops the belt to Shinsuke. That'd be pretty great. So I think Shinsuke needs it more than ever, more than anybody right now, especially on the SmackDown roster. Right. And then we get Baron Corbin versus Shinsuke because they're also feuding right now. So that just kind of loops back around. Was, but Corbin has the uh, money in the bank. Oh, that's right. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. So don't be so sad about that. He doesn't impress me at all. He's so good. He's, he's such okay. a badass. He's not. I don't think he's a badass. <laughs> like, he doesn't... Like, I don't feel threatened by Baron Corbin. Whatsoever. Really? Yeah, like, not at all. He's scary as shit. I think he kind of looks like a pansy. And I will tell him Damn. that to his face. Like, I don't... He's not intimidating. He's not an intimidating... He's tall. Yeah, he's tall. Anybody can be I think he has tall. a cool moveset. He has cool music. Cool look. I, I, Love looks, the end of days. It looks kind of cool, but, like, he doesn't... You were just talking about buying his elite figure. But then I didn't. Because I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, true. it's Baron Corbin. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, from day one, literally day one, I was on my phone. I was like, where is this dude from? Where is... Garrett Corbin from because I didn't know what the fuck his name was. I I have a hard time understanding people over. PA He's speakers. from Detroit. I was like, "Fuck, is he from uh, Homosassa?" We did see him a long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. And I was like, "Fucking Garrett Corbin." Who's... I think we even said like, "Oh, it's CM Punk." It's like the, the who they're bringing in to replace CM Punk. Like I legit thought he was someone local that they pulled. Oh, yeah, you did say that. I was like, this guy looks like he's from around here. (laughs) Just some random jobber. Yeah. Now he's Mr. Money in the Bank. I guess. (laughs) But yeah, I don't don't think he's intimidating whatsoever, so. He needs something. He needs some kind of edge. He needs, I don't know. Him and Ambrose are in the same camp right now where they're like, I like them, but they don't really have much. Ambrose is just getting boring. I think he's getting bored, that seems could be like. Too. But that is neither here nor there. Um, um, actually, I think it's a lot of here. And I, I, I think <laughs> I was going to bring this up on a different topic. Yeah. But, like, it's Ambrose and The Miz, and it's been Ambrose and The Miz for, like, three months. And The Miz is carrying that feud, no doubt. I'm tired of seeing these feuds. That's, that's what wrestling is. What do you mean? <laughs> like, it's the same fucking matches oh okay like i'm so tired that's why i stopped watching 205 yeah because the same and all of it almost and and that like and that's one of the things that bugs me about uh like gender and randy it's like oh i have a rematch and i have another rematch i have another rematch like how many rematches do you fucking get dude that's fine if they want to do rematches give them matches in between yeah not against each other right not against the fucking bollywood boys (laughs) There are other people. Uh, Jinder just faced uh, Ty Dillinger. I didn't watch it, but I love Ty Dillinger. I should have watched that. Sorry, Ty. I'm sure you're listening. Uh, I'm sure <laughs> everyone listens. We are the most important wrestling podcast there is. Damn straight. Uh, so, yeah. I, I Yeah, did they, they need to figure out something with some of these feuds. I mean, now we got Seth and Bray. Which is good. I mean, they have good matches, but, like, there's no yeah, reason know. for it. 
And I don't mind there not being a reason. But don't... If there's no reason, don't give him match after match after match after... Like, let them have a match against each other and move on. Or if yeah. they're not going to move on, give them matches in between. Also, you got to switch it up, though. Is like, have a blow-off match, like a like a Punjabi prison match. Hopefully that's the end of that feud. I that is a major match. Yeah, it needs to be. I hope to God it is. And if it's like, next pay-per-view, Randy Orton and Jinder Mahal are going at it again, it's like... So would you guys have the Punjabi prison match for again? Like, yeah, and what did that happen with? Oh, fucking Hardys and Shizaro. Right. Like they did the... I think that's done now. Cage, or was it Hell in a Cell? Oh, right. What they just did? Uh, Besides, Pat, before the Iron Man match. Cage match. I think it was a cage match. Yeah. Like... Now, that's that true, yeah. is a little bit of an exception, because that Iron Man match, we'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah, don't, don't even know that was <laughs> uh, Let's go ahead and get to the Mae Young Classic. Okay. You can also find an article about this, by the way, on futurevillains.com slash Classic 32 um, All of the competitors are on here. We're going to talk about a few of them, not all of them. Um, and there's also a follow-up article on that, which I guess we're going to talk about some here about some competitors that I have some knowledge on. Uh, so, we got a bunch of, like, great women here. Tessa Blanchard, Don't who, know. um, Tully Blanchard's daughter, and the stepdaughter of Magnum TA. Oh, that's right. Okay. I think that's who, like, I think that's how she's related to him. I think so. She's, uh, she's got an MMA background. She looks badass. I've very seen... good chance she'll win. She'll at least do very good. I've seen... A ton of pictures of her all over yes. the internet right now. Yes, and that's why I think that might it's possible that she might win. She's very popular. Um, the other favorite to win, there's a few of them actually. Uh, Kavita Devi, who I don't know much about, but she is from uh, India. Oh no, Haryana, India. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, Haryana. she she might Haryana. get pushed to win. <laughs> I hope not. Like I. The whole Jinder Mahal thing, everyone's saying, like, the only reason they're doing that is because the Indian thing. Right. It's half true. Gender is very good. Um, and it makes business sense for them to have an Indian champion while trying to move into India. I think it's smart. Right. At least he doesn't suck. Because he doesn't. He, he's not terrible. I don't know about her, but I think it is a little silly to be like, all of our champions are Indian. It's like, all right, now you're... <laughs> it's like TNA. Or Global Force. One of the two. Whatever same. they're called. One and the same. Uh, I remember a few months ago, I saw a picture and all of their all of their champions were Latino. And really? Like, all right. Well, good job, guys. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, cool. But I hope yeah. you didn't do it on purpose. They like, hopefully didn't do it just to say that that. Yeah. Like they had LAX. They had Alberto Del Fucktard. They had. Yeah. Um, I don't what's know who her else name? is I from figured, LAX. Yeah, I, yeah, but I was like, well, I mean, cool, good job, but yeah. hope it wasn't a fun I don't think only WWE will do that. Um, we've also got Mia Yim, who I'm very excited about because she's one of my favorites from TNA. Um, she's excellent. Have you ever seen some of her matches? Nope. She needs to be in <laughs> NXT after this. She, her and Asuka could murder each other. Wait, maybe you've shown me. I don't remember. Probably. She's got. You, she's usually got green hair. I think you'd probably recognize her if you saw her. And then we got my favorite to win, Candice LeRae. This is cool. <laughs> so exciting. I saw that name, and I was so excited. And I, like, I was like, oh, it's so great. And like, I showed Kimberly some of her matches. And that documentary... Uh, by Kenny, um, oh my god. I want to say Williams, but no. What was, yeah, I don't know, my phone's dead, I can't look it up. Uh, well, we've talked about it on the podcast before. Yeah. Go listen to every other one of our podcasts, all the way through, until you find it. Let's see, Kenny Evolve Docus. I'll find it. Kenny Johnson. Yeah. He Not Kenny Williams. He did a documentary here. about, uh, Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae. I can't really watch it, and she really enjoyed it. Oh, Gargano came back on NXT. Yep. 
He did. So, I mean, that kind of makes sense. Those two were... Yes, and hopefully she gets signed. And it's so funny in that documentary because they're like, oh, yeah, hopefully one of us gets to Florida. And it's like, now they're both in Florida. Yeah. It, I just, I love that story. That needs to be, that needs to play out on TV. How perfect of a journey they've had. Oh, no. Um, what? What, do you think they're going to screw it up? No, I can just see something, like, knowing the WWE... So they've been, if they did that, if they did, like, Johnny Gargano, or they're married, right? I don't think so. I think they're just a, they're just a couple. They would probably push that they're married. But Johnny Gargano. Push them to get married. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Candice LeRae being a couple. And then Roderick Strong. And they show his wife a whole hell of a lot. Right. So, like, I could see that being a thing. Like. Feuding family thing. Well, Roddy's don't. wife doesn't wrestle. No, but she does MMA. Mm. She's one of the. Four does horse, she? She's one of the four horsewomen of the MMA. Really? I, I didn't know that. Am I mistaken? Comment below. Tell me that I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. And I've seen That's a incredible. lot of stuff where it's the four horsewomen of the MMA and four horsewomen of wrestling together. So, and she is on there a lot. The Roderick Strong wife. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Strong. Marina want. Shafir. Is that her name? I guess. Sure. I don't know. I think you might be making this up. I could be making all of this up. Hey, it's wrestling. It's, it's all fake. Even the stories I'm making up. I'm going to start doing that. What's that? Just making up stuff for the podcast. <laughs> Completely bullshit stories. <laughs> Roderick Strong dating an MMA fighter. That was from October 2015. Yeah, I Roderick know Strong and MMA fighter girlfriend welcome baby boy. Okay. Yeah, we knew she was an MMA fighter, but I think she was one of the four horsewomen. Damn. Damn, Damn Roddy. Ronda Rousey. And you know, the other two. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, are you going to name them all right now? <laughs> Oh, jeez. Uh, okay. Sarah Connor and uh, Julia Stefani. Who are you the naming? The other horsewomen. Well, they even may. Is that John Connor's mom? It might be. <laughs> <laughs> if your name is Sarah Connor, you can't name your kid that. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, those are not their names. Unless it is, and I'm a fucking genius. That would be incredible. Uh, we got Serena Deeb, which I think, I think she might be the uh, the one that used to be in WWE. I'm googling a lot of things this episode, and I'm not because my phone's dead, and right. my laptop's about twenty feet away, so that's not happening either. Yes. Um, she was part of the Straight Edge Society. Okay, she also sounds like the person who got her last name made fun of a lot in school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Uh, but yeah, that's interesting because they even mentioned on the uh, the parade of people, as I, <laughs> as I called it earlier, um, that she's a competitor, a veteran competitor, and now she's back in WWE. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, let's see, we got... Jazzy Gabbert. Wait, oh no, she's the big, the big buff one. Uh, shit. Which one? We saw a few of these people in NXT recently, but I'm not gonna bring them up because I can't remember which ones they are. Uh, let's see, Abby Lath, who is Princess Kimberly. Okay, yeah. Of Chikara. Uh, I'm super interested to see how she does. Who is the one that I've seen the elbow video from? Kyrie Sane. Or Kyrie Hojo, I think she's known as now. Okay, yeah. That elbow drop. I don't know that I've seen it. Holy fuck. I gotta look that up. How do you not see it? I've seen it like, I see it like 800 times a day. I don't know. I watch it every time. It is the, every, the post I saw, like the first one was like, this elbow drop looks like a fatality out of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> and it does. Well, I mean, let's pull it up. up. You guys have to wait on us to catch up. 
Yeah, well, yeah, as always. I'll turn the TV down. Let's Don't want to uh, do that copyright infringement. I don't know that they do that with podcasts very much. Am I typing? Kyrie. Well, they listen to Look us. at that. Third thing. Kyrie Hojo elbow. That's funny. Because it crap. was that good. Kyrie Hojo. The third one, I think. Nope. No? Uh, this might be. It's not the one I'm talking about. But that's her elbow drop. This, this is the one I'm talking about. Is it from the Mae Young Classic? Yeah. Okay. This is someone's video. It's not the official one, but still. Is it our My friends? Oh, God. Is that Tessa Blanchard? I think it is. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that elbow drop. I think she gets so much height. Huh? Jump and just oh feet. Oh my god. Feet to the ceiling. She like, just, like, you're not even trying to, like, save the other person. She's literally just driving her elbow into her. Good lord. Hey, look. Third one down. Uh, oh, what? The parade of No, champions? okay, up one. Oh, whoops. Marty Skrull. Steve Austin. Yeah. Which they just showed. I bet you that was legit then. Yeah, the being the elite, Steve Austin. Where's uh, girl, yeah, gets a call from Steve Austin. Yeah, you should take this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, you awesome. should. Uh, so, God, we're going on the fucking tirades tonight. Uh, we've got Sarah Logan. You're a and big we can fan stop of. Stop there. Yeah. Sarah Logan all the way. You think she's going to win? 100%. I think there's a chance. Yeah. Because, I mean, they pushed her in NXT so far. She's won a bunch of matches. She's won on, from what we've seen locally. And she's on her character. So it's about oh. time to go. <laughs> about time to take this one and run. Not my favorite character of hers. Uh, I really like the Viking one she started with in NXT. I kind of like the redneck thing with, like, the fur coat. and Yeah, I don't The music was really good. Yeah, it's perfect. Like, she does yeah. it very well. And her... Uh, I've seen her in interviews, and the redneck style character fits her like speech pattern better. Right. That's so, the thing is like, I feel like anytime someone's given a character they don't really care for, yeah, or kind of have to act a bit more for, they don't do it as well. Yeah, and like I, I follow her on Instagram, and like she's always her and Ray Rowe are always in. Like Ren Fair Viking stuff. I guess, like they there you go. It. I believe and it. If you look, um, both of their wrist tapes, they have the uh, the Viking symbol. Um, For what? Fuck. What's his name? Tyr. Uh, yeah, T Y R. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they both wear that on their wrist tape. If you oh. watch. I only know that because of Smite, the video game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the guy who gets... I think it's the guy who gets his arm bitten by the Yes. Way. Yeah. Him. Uh, yeah, they both have He has that. just one giant sword, at least in the video game he does. <laughs> yeah, they, they have that on their on both of their wrists. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Piper Niven, also known as Viper from WCPW. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know why they changed her name. Viper's a cool name. Maybe because she doesn't... Oh, maybe because of Randy Orton. Oh. And because she is, like, a bigger girl. Yeah. And I don't really think of Vipers as being strong things. But Piper is yeah. not the best name. It doesn't matter. She's really good. She, she is really good, yeah. And then speaking of really good from WC, I think she's very young. She's uh, the redhead. She's the real tiny redhead. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we didn't... We watched the match, she she kicked uh, Bia Priestley's ass, and then they were going to have a match, probably on Built to Destroy. That's right. Yeah. Okay, now Scottish girl. Right. Yeah. She so, really this tournament looks like it's going to be really, really good. Um, I've heard good things about it so far. They haven't aired any episodes, right? No. Oh. Um, I think August they are. Oh, wow. I mean, that's not too far, really. Month has gone by so fast. Now, being said that it looks like it's great, all the competitors look impressive. Apparently, there were some officials that were not too happy with the first two nights of the May Young Classic because they believe that the women have to be hot and that the women in the tournament weren't good looking enough for WWE standards. 
Right, who said this? Some officials. JBL. <laughs> that's okay. my guess. Officials? Like referees? I was first off, I don't think that's the referees. Bruce Pritchard, probably. I don't know. Probably fucking JBL. Probably. Because I don't like him. Uh, by the way, I'm s- s- going to try your cord, because this cord might be... Oh, okay, stuff. go for it. So when I tried to plug my drone in earlier, it didn't want to work. Either. Well, that's not good. So, I also uh, fucked up my drone, so... So, yeah, that's, that's insane. Like, I know Jazzy is, like, she's got real short hair. She's, like, a big muscle builder kind of woman. And um, I don't think I've seen her, but it, it, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. So, if, like, everyone looks like... Trish Stratus or Kelly Kelly or whatever, like that's that's not that interesting. I don't know. You you don't want the same look all through. The same with the guys too. You don't want. I mean, some people do, but I don't think it's very interesting if every if everyone looks like Brock Lesnar. Yeah, that that and that's what I've said before. Is like. You know, people want this w- one type of person and, and to be in the WWE is like this big muscly type. And even when people complain about guys like The Big Show and Mark Henry being boring, it's like if everyone was Daniel Bryan, it would be boring as hell. Right. It it's would not, get boring. Yeah, absolutely. It would just be the same stuff, but having different body types and different styles makes it interesting. Right. So that's just that's very upsetting. That that they would do that, they would say that rather, and hopefully that does not that doesn't mean hopefully that means it's not Vince McMahon or someone like that saying that shit. Hopefully that we don't see some of these women get canned right afterwards. Right. Yeah, I hope not. Yeah, because that shouldn't matter. It shouldn't. I mean, some of the ones on the main roster. Mm-hmm. Everyone has their own opinions, but. It's ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, we're just a... we're getting heated right now. Just okay. pissed off. Apparently, Vince McMahon felt like talking smack and raw talk, be, being that they were an unscripted show, it wasn't best for the company's interest, and they've canceled them. And Renee Young and Daniel Bryan found out via Twitter. <laughs> okay, so we've mentioned this all day that we we're going to bring this up. So now I finally get to say what I've thought about it okay I don't think it's a big deal yeah but there's been some great stuff on Talking Smack Kevin Owens is great on Talking Smack and it's unscripted that explains it yeah why he's so good first off Raw and Smackdown should sort of be unscripted sure apparently that's not gonna happen if Vince doesn't like it this is that says a lot to me but he likes scripts. He just wants to make movies. That's, yeah. That's what he wants. That's what he said when he took over the company. He doesn't want a wrestling promotion. He wants to make movies. He said that? Yes. You can look it up. He, that's a quote. It might not be the exact quote. Okay. But yeah, Vince McMahon wants to make movies. Well, he did instantly make it sports entertainment. Yeah. Maybe not instantly, but switch it to that. But yeah, he wants to make movies. I think Triple H wants wrestling. Yes. And in that article, it does say that Vince has been around less. Yeah. So hopefully he retires soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, Raw Talk and Talking Raw Talk Smack. Was, Raw Talk was always good. Talking Smack had some great moments. Oh, yeah. the I know exactly what you're thinking about. There's when, multiple Kevin Owens moments. <laughs> oh, how uncomfortable was that one, though, we watched? When he, when he ended the show? Yeah. Yeah. Like, we weren't going to watch it, and all of a sudden we were like... Oh and now God. we know it's unscripted. Yeah. So you know all those producers were behind the camera going, uh, oh, oh, uh man. Oh, shit. <laughs> and Renee Young is just like, I This I is can't. the Kevin Owens show. <laughs> yeah. but, but, like, okay, talking smack and raw talk. Uh-huh. Seems a little redundant when you think about how much actual wrestling we get during the show. Sure. It seems like they should have gotten all the fucking talking out during the show. I would like to see them do a weekly... They do a WWE weekly show, but it's just clips. They do. I've, I've caught it on Hulu. And I'm like, man, this is great, but I always forget what it's called. Uh, I think it's a WWE weekly. 
I think so. And it's got the, <laughs> uh, God, I can't think of her name. But they're like in an office just talking about clips. They should have Renee Young and Daniel Bryan or somebody do that. Like even yeah. Daniel Bryan and somebody from Raw. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great, actually. That'd be really interesting to talk about the weekly events. Yeah. Or... Corey, Corey Graves is on Raw, right? Yes. Yeah, Daniel Bryan, Corey Graves. That would be really... Even Daniel Bryan, Corey Graves, and Renee Young. Yeah. And just there you go. Run down what happened during the week for us people who don't give a shit to watch three hours. <laughs> we can't, it's like five, six hours of wrestling. Seven hours, really. Raw, SmackDown, 205 Live, and NXT. And that's just the stuff we watch so we can talk about it on the show. Yeah, which we're watching a lot less of because of PWG and WCPW. And, yeah, a little less WWE. But there was a lot of stuff from this week and last week about WWE. I watch NXT. And I still skip through some of the matches now. Yeah, well, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to this story then now that you bring up NXT. Uh, Bobby Fish debuted in NXT and had an incredible match with Aleister Black. That was so fucking good. I am so excited for Bobby Fish being in NXT. He's so damn good. He, I haven't known about him for that long, mm-hmm. but man, have I become a big fan of his. I love that the match was a match. Yeah. Like, I, I love that it wasn't a squash. He had to get in his finisher. Yeah. He didn't, like, take his time, take his time, finisher, one, two, three. Yeah. It seemed like Alistair saw the opening, took the kick, and won. Right. Because Bobby could have beat him. Yeah, I was that a little afraid. That is clear that Bobby could have beat him. I was a little scared, actually. I think Alistair was, too. Yeah. It's really interesting. So, I, Alistair Black, if I'm not mistaken, still undefeated. Yes. And then we also know through our inside sources that uh, the other half of Red Dragon... And you can find an article about this on futurevillains.com. Also debuted... Kyle fucking Riley. And, oh, uh, man. Also against Aleister Black. Yeah. So... I, I goddamn, I'm so excited for Red Dragon. And they mentioned that Bobby Fish was a tag team competitor mainly. Yeah. So that sets up for Kyle O'Reilly to come in and them to make to form Red Dragon. I hope so. They have to. They're like the tag teams right now in NXT kind of suck. Where's TM sixty one? What's going on? I heard one of them is injured. Oh, that could be. And then the didn't we get one of the guys in Ocala? Did we? Did we? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. We were t- we were talking about it. Oh no! It was the, it was the NXT after Ocala. One of the guys had a singles match. Okay. So one of the guys from TM sixty one. Yeah, because we were talking about it with Chris Braddock. Okay. Yeah, you think you're right though. I think I remember that one of the guys are injured, which sucks. Because right now we just have AOP, who I like more than I used to, and fucking nope. heavy machinery. Yeah. Or just AOP without a gimmick. But I feel like I could be in Happy Machinery. <laughs> so. Oh, fuck the revival. Fuck the revival. Uh, <laughs> I just don't like Heavy Machinery. It's like their gimmick is that they're fat guys, and I just don't care for that. I don't know, I like it. Otis is funny. Yeah? Yeah, like Chris was giving him shit earlier. He's actually hilarious. Like... I saw a match between them and Street Profits. Okay. Who are going to be debuting on TV now. Cool. They're so, good. Yeah, like, they're not bad. And that guy's going to keep stirring the pot. Uh, He's been doing that for years, trying to work it on into every single gimmick. Stop doing it, man. Even when he was with uh, the Chad Gable guy. and Stop he, doing it. Oh, my God. What's his name? My Angelo memory is so Yes. Angelo, I said this on a podcast before. I love you, man. You are so good. Stop stirring the pot. Keep doing Stop. it. No, I love that, it. it's so stupid. People do it. Kids do it. The guy with the red shoes and the red cup does it. Stir it's the pot. It's such a fucking. I don't know what you're doing. Looks like you're trying to diddle something. Just stir the pot. <laughs> he does this. No, no. You gotta, you gotta hold the spoon and stir the pot. You can't stir the pot with your bare hand. He does. He doesn't. You gotta, you gotta hold the spoon. Two bare hands. <laughs> 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 so, 
So, yeah, I, I think Red Dragon versus Straight Profits would be great. Red Dragon versus AOP to take the fucking championships would be great. Red Dragon versus DIY. Even though they're broken up now, yeah, which is really depressing. <laughs> Johnny. Like, there's a lot of tag teams I can see getting back together, but not that. <laughs> Tommaso did <laughs> Then, the, just the icing on the cake, though, was that Father's Day post. Oh, God. What? Yeah, it was a picture Ciampa posted from that match, or the end of the match, and he's like, you're not even going to wish me a happy Father's Day? Saying that I'm your daddy or some shit like that. It was terrible. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, Chapa. Jeez. See, I, I am extremely excited. We need an uh, influx of really talented people in NXT. Go on up. Yeah. And we've been left with AOP. Yeah, that's kind of the main feud right now. I mean, obviously we have Bobby Roode, who's great. Hideo Itami's... I don't know what's up with him right now. Him and Cassius are kind of... I don't know. They got, they're in the same ballpark with Dean. They need something. I like what they're doing. With what, Cassius and Hideo? Yeah, like... Yeah? Cassius is like, come on, man. And was like, oh, I'm sorry. They need to fight each up. other already, though. I think... Did they have them? They had a match, I think. Yeah, they keep having, like, friendly matches, though. Yeah, but I think it's... Like, then they tagged this yes. last one. But then Cassius was like, man, I'm done with you. One of them needs to turn heel. And just kick the shit out of the other one. Because that would be a great match. The two of them could kick the shit out of each other. Yeah. Hideo quite literally. Yeah. So yeah, I, I really want to see that. Um, but, I mean, we got Bobby Roode, who's amazing. He's glorious. Uh, Cien could be good. And yeah. Aleister Black. But they're still not doing a whole lot with Alistair. I think they're I think they're building him. Yeah. He's undefeated. I think he's built though. <laughs> I don't I mean, yeah, but I think they're I think they're building him up something special. Yeah? Like like he's undefeated so far. For a, and it's been a little bit. It's been against some pretty serious people. Oh, definitely. And a lot of jobbers, too. But There was a few jobbers at the beginning. I don't know. Oh, man. What about Red Dragon versus Aleister Black? Two on one. Red Dragon versus Aleister Black and Chris Hero. That doesn't even need to happen. It's just Aleister Black. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what, were their, what was their tag name? Black and Hero? Yeah. Black and Heroes? <laughs> fuck, I forgot. Black and Chicken Heroes? Sounds delicious. Either that or he gets uh, Dante back into the Sumerian Death Squad again. Is he wrestling? I don't know. I don't I don't think so. Maybe. Or he gets somebody and becomes something like the Sumerian Death Squad again. I think Alistair would do better to single. Solomon Crow comes back. That's not happening. And I think Sammy's doing way too good on the Indies. And Lucha. Yeah. As, Still haven't seen that. As Jeremiah Crane. God, I just want to... I, I'm thinking about just skipping ahead. Him, Paul I probably London, will. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are we missing right now? But then you got that problem of you're probably missing a bunch of storyline. Right. Fucking Lucha Underground. I love Lucha Underground, <laughs> though. So inconvenient to watch because there's so much good shit to catch up on. Yeah. It's not like so, WWE, you can just jump in. There's so many other shows I need to watch. Apparently now I need to watch uh, Dexter. Yeah, yes, you fucking do. Dexter's still my favorite show of all time. I gotta, I gotta watch Westworld. Yeah, I haven't watched Westworld. I heard it's fucking incredible. Nothing to do with wrestling. No. <laughs> but there's a ton of fucking movies to see. Yeah. I gotta see Wonder Woman. I gotta see uh, hashtag first world problems. Yeah. Uh, speaking of first world problems, not a good segue. Uh, AJ Styles won the United States Championship uh, off TV, but at Madison Square Garden. So it kind of makes sense, because it is MSG. And they always do something crazy there. Yeah. I am upset that Kevin Owens uh, isn't champion, obviously. He's still my new face of America. Yeah, I think he like blacked out his Twitter or something. Yeah. Until he can get the championship yeah. back. 
I think I I legit think he's injured. Maybe. Because I saw something where the the matches he was scheduled to have were all canceled. So I think he's. I don't know if he was injured in the match or they had the match because he was injured. So there's uh July oh shit July 9th. Kevin Owens possibly injured according to Sports Kita. Yeah, maybe that's what I saw. I see a lot from that site. Could be also due to the upcoming AJ Styles documentary. So it might just be part of that. Fucking business. Uh, let's see. Coincidentally, it was a Raw show with AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens being the only SmackDown match on the card. Despite the speculation that he was injured, Owens fought on Saturday as well at another live event where he took on Styles and Baron Corbin in a triple threat match. So, yeah, he's probably not injured. Was that... That was after? Yeah. After. So, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. could be injured. Like, not enough to... The triple threat match, the other two guys could have carried it. Yeah, so it, it's possible it could be. He could have a nagging injury. Mm-hmm. That would prevent him from having, like, a great match. Um, we watched Great Balls of Fire. We watched, watched most of it. Uh, yeah. We didn't. We watched that 30-minute that Iron Man match. That was really good. Holy that shit. That was solid. Uh, Hardy's proven that they're still incredible, and Shizaro proving that they're still the best. They yeah. are the bar. They are the bar. I loved... The C- bar. <laughs> Cesaro's pen, the final pen on Jeff Hardy. Like, I loved that pen because Jeff, it looked like Jeff was fighting so hard to get out of it. And yeah. Cesaro was fighting so hard to keep those damn right. shoulders. Like, that, was, that looked like the most legit pen I've ever seen. And then Cesaro just ran. The entire, <laughs> like... 15 seconds at the end. Jeff nearly pulled his tights down. <laughs> yeah. and that then, was really, like... Funny. God, the timing of it, though. Yeah. Uh, I read something about, like, they were supposed to get him in, like, a, literally a second earlier. So it could be one, two, buzzer. But instead it was one buzzer. Whatever. Fine, <laughs> so <yeah>. still... <laughs> it's here nor there. Yeah. Could happen. God damn, the timing... To do 30 minutes of timing, basically. Because mm-hmm. they had to get each fall. Uh, that fall where they murdered Cesaro. When, uh, I think, Matt did the split thing. and Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. This is just the first fall. Just the kick to yeah. Matt's face. Was the bicycle kick. <laughs> pretty awesome. That I always get nervous when I watch Iron Man matches. Because it's like, this might suck. This might be 30 minutes of just chain wrestling... Which would be kind of boring. Right. Might not be all that good. This match was the opposite. When it was over, when it was that one buzzer, I was like, buzzer? Oh, shit, the match is over. Yeah. Okay, I didn't even realize it had been 30 minutes. That's how it was when I watched uh, Omega Omega and uh, Okada. Right. Because I I had a really, like, I sort of kind of read that it came to a draw so I sort of kind of knew it was going to be an hour long match but when they announced that there was only 5 minutes remaining I was like seriously I've watched this for 55 minutes <laughs> there's no way <sighs> we need Omega in NXT actually I feel like Omega could just skip NXT at this point Yeah, and Okada's been showing up He's been backstage behind Raw, at least at Raw. You see the uh, the picture I posted? I don't of, know which one. Of Okada, standing there with his American flag shirt on. No. Yeah, it's Okada, standing there with an American flag shirt on. I think he has his hand over his chest. But my favorite thing is he's standing right outside of a Walmart. Oh hold, yes, hold I did see that. Sh- okay, and it's I not, saw that picture. It's I don't think it's meant to show that he's standing outside of a Walmart, but he's. I mean. <laughs> I live in Florida. I know a Walmart when I see it. Right. That's true. And it's definitely a Walmart bag he's got. Looks at a six pack of something in there too. I thought it was really funny I saw on some website Okada snuck out of Raw. But it's literally, the video is literally him walking out. I don't know what it was. It was like the back like not like the back door kind of thing. Yeah. 
Like, you're not going to go through the fucking front. Right, like, yeah. <laughs> but, and there was all those fans there, and, like, all the fans were like, oh, God, he walked right over and talked to people and signed stuff. He's not very good at sneaking. Because <laughs> <laughs> this article's like, he snuck out the back. Like, no, he probably left exactly where he was supposed to. Yeah. And then walked over and, like, signed shit and said hi to people. I don't think he's trying to be sneaky. No, because I'm sure he was, if not invited, I'm sure they... I'm sure, I'm sure he was invited. invited. Yeah, he was invited by Triple H or Nakamura or someone. Yeah. But I hope, God, I hope we see Okada. Oh, in did, weren't we just talking about Nakamura going to the NXT thing? TNA. He went to the TNA Fan Fest. Yeah. That's what I meant. That was the uh, last podcast we talked about that. Yeah, you know what I saw right after that? Huh. A picture of Triple H there. Seriously? Yeah. That's weird. I mean, he's he's got a lot of friends there. Yeah. I don't know. It's whatever. It, the whole, like... I mean, Dixie Carter was just on fucking WWE Network. Yeah. On the Kurt Angle documentary. That's yeah. how it should be. Everyone should just get along. Yeah. It's stupid that they don't. You know, look at WWE helping out uh, Insane Championship Wrestling or whatever in Ireland. and mm-hmm. That's how it should be. Like what, what? You seriously think Ring of Honor is gonna get so big that it takes over WWE? No, not gonna happen. Yeah, I don't think WWE is worried about it. and They shouldn't be. And if it does happen, it's not gonna be for a long time. Long time. I mean, would I like to see it? Of course. Oh sure. But. But right now, you know, the Indies and ROH and even TNA are kind of building WWE stars. So they should treat them nicely. Ring of Honor does not have a film department. <laughs> you know? <laughs> what? Ring of Honor does not have a film department. What like, is... WWE has a film They department. have an everything department. Like, they make movies. Like, we're not seeing a Ring of Honor produced movie. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, like... When you said film, I was thinking, like, they don't record anything. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they do record things. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, a feature film department. Right. Yeah, like... Uh, and they shouldn't. But I'm just... Yeah. Nobody's going to overtake WWE. No. I don't think it's ever going to happen at this point. Um, I mean, it will. It will happen at some point. Just not sure when. We didn't watch the uh, garbage match of Big Cass versus Enzo Amore. We watched Enzo's promo. We watched the promo. So good. I, I love Enzo. It. God, I wish they would push him instead of Cass. I don't even like all this, and it was really good. What's that? I said, like, I don't even like all this, and it was a really good promo. Elvis? Did you see the promo? He's talking about Frank Sinatra. So, is that who Old Blue Eyes is? Yeah, I thought so. I don't know who the fuck it is. Man, I, I hate him when I doubt about. myself. Old Blue you, you know what? You might be right. Elvis Looking Bear, about... Brown Eyes. I thought yes. he was talking about Elvis. Frank, Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. <laughs> okay, well, Frank Sinatra. That's why I was confused. I was like, what did he just say? I don't know. The, the tattoo looked like Elvis. <laughs> nope, it didn't either. No? <laughs> I thought it did. Did you notice it had a Wu-Tang tattoo right beneath it, though? <laughs> That's what real... I, oh, I was, Amore. I was looking at the Wu-Tang symbol. Sorry. That's incredible. I was like, I didn't know Elvis was a Wu-Tang. It's not even Elvis. <laughs> Sinatra was a Wu-Tang. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sinatra Tang. Uh, so yeah, that promo was so good. Speaking of Wu Tang, you know Wu Wear's coming back? Who? Wu Wear? Uh, clothing wise? I like RZA, but that's about all I I don't really do I don't really fuck with Wu Tang. <laughs> oh, I remember the guy we can't get to come onto our podcast to save our life. When he was in middle school, he got a uh, his grandma got him a Wu Tang sweatshirt. Oh, Funniest thing. He probably would have still had it if it didn't burn down in the fire. Oh, yeah. Shit happens. Uh, and then Big Cass came out to, like, really garbage music. a great song. Like, what the fuck? It was just weird. He felt like he had just debuted in NXT and that was his music. Yeah. I, the Like, the opening for the song wasn't too bad. I was like, okay... Okay, and then it, then the song kind of kicked in, and I was like, "What?" No, it never really did kick in. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. 
It was just boring. He's boring. He can't cut a promo to save his life. I don't know. I don't understand why they felt the need to split these two up. Because it wasn't necessary. It's like a bootleg test. Yeah. A little bit. I don't remember if a test could cut good, good promos or not. He had the testicles. Yes, he did. <laughs> You're right. So. God, I don't remember if Test had good promos or not. That was going to bug me now. Because I really liked Test back in the day. Rest in peace, buddy. Yeah. Uh. So, yeah, he's just a fucking terrible everything. He's like a made in China. <laughs> Black market um, knockoff. See, after that, we watched the ambulance match. Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns, which I like a lot. I thought that was a great hardcore match, and I don't really care for those types of matches. It was barely hardcore. They kicked the shit out of each other. One of them got put through a video wall, and then Roman Reigns speared an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did spear an ambulance. But that, that could have worked out any better. <laughs> one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It really just, was. Spear, they just, whoop, just straight to the back of the ambulance. So it was like, he probably went in there and Braun went, where did he go? Oh, he must have gone in the ambulance. Oh, Let me shit, look. I win. <laughs> kind of, it was almost like the dumpster match with Kalisto. Yeah. Mm, Braun, now Braun thing, knows man. how it feels. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Braun tricked the big dumb oaf. <laughs> Uh, oh, I shouldn't man. say that. I, Roman, you're not that bad. Um, but then uh, Roman kicked the shit out of Braun, put him in the back of the ambulance, drove it away, and slammed it into another semi. And by the time they got him out of it, using the jaws of life... Yeah, Jamie Noble just couldn't get that door open. <laughs> Kurt Angle standing there and a little Jamie Noble trying to open it. Fuck's sake. Little four foot eleven. Yeah. 98-pound Jamie Noble cannot get that to Oh, my God. Um, they got it open, and, dude, his arms, like, his elbows especially were fucked up. They looked like they were shredded up. And then they showed his face, and it looked really, really bad. So I don't know how much of it was a work, and maybe none of it was a work, but holy shit. And then Braun walked away from it, just barely, but... You're smiling like you know it's work. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. They didn't put one of their main superstars. Sure, it wasn't as real as it looked. Uh, but if nothing else, they did a great fucking job of faking it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just like with the Montreal screw job. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, maybe I just said that. Um. And then now WWE has put out a statement uh, on Braun's condition. Uh, Braun Strowman miraculously walked out of Dallas under his own power after refusing medical attention. Uh, they can confirm he is in the care of his personal physician, will not disclose the nature of his injuries at this time. And per Engel's office, when Strowman is cleared to compete again, there will be a public announcement confirming his status. So in other words, Braun wants to go on vacation. He hasn't even been here that long. I wonder if his elbows more fucked up than they realized. I don't know. I saw, I saw the pictures of it. It looked like like his injuries. You mean? Yeah, like it, he it, looks like he's got shredded up by glass and shit. Oh no, I mean the real injury. Oh okay. Like when <laughs> when he was injured the first time with the elbow, like his whole arm was black. Oh that yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he could be more injured than. Or yeah. he just wants a fucking vacation. And this is how they're sending him out. Or he's going to be back next week. Or Because yeah. he was supposed to be gone a long time, then came back in a much shorter time, pulled a John Cena. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that now. I don't mind Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. I like. I think that they're, they're a couple of big dumb oafs kicking the shit out of each other, and they have pretty good matches. This goes back to what I was saying earlier, though. It's tired of the feuds. The rematch after rematch after rematch. Yeah. Well, this should be it. This really should be it with these two. There's so many times it should be it. And we know it's not going to. Hopefully it will be. 
Because, God, I don't know what they should do now. Roman should probably go heal. Yeah, I heard that too. I don't know what the hell that noise was. It's probably the cat. That better be the fucking cat. Or there's something else under this couch. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, Roman needs to go heal now. Like, I know I've said before that he shouldn't. But... <laughs> You still hear it? No, it, I feel it. Oh, that's nice. It's probably a raccoon. Don't tell me that. There's a raccoon behind you. Oh, it's terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Strowman! <laughs> Strowman was under my seat. So sorry, I'm on not vacation. finished with you. I'm not finished with you. Okay. Which is so fucking good. I have a terrifying story about a possum that I'm not going to share on the podcast. Okay. Um... Yeah, Roman needs to go heal now. I've said it before that he shouldn't, but after that, after fucking vehicular homicide, what is up with Samoans and vehicular homicide, by the way? I'm not the first one to make that joke. <laughs> but Rikishi tried to kill Stone Cold, right? Mm -hmm. um, the Rock, I swear to God, the Rock ran somebody over. Probably. He has in movies, I'm sure. I'm sure oh, we yeah. can find something. Uh, Check in the Smackdown Hotel. Damn straight. The Roman has to go heal now. Braun doesn't need to go face. Because <laughs> damn, that'd be weird. How imagine, would Braun Strowman work as a baby face? Can you imagine Braun Strowman coming out, like, jumping around, throwing his hands up, like, like John Cena would or something? I don't know how you would make him a face. I really don't. It would have to be, like, pity. Yeah. Like, you like him because he's gone through so much. And he's trying to make his life better for his family or something. <laughs> like, it has to be some bullshit like that. Or they go full uh, Funkadactyl on him. <laughs> hmm? Did you ever... <laughs> you probably didn't see that. Um, Brodus Clay? No, I, never, I didn't see it. You I never saw it? it? I've only seen those action figures. Well, we have to, I'll show you the, right, this after the podcast. Which, I think we have like one more thing to talk about. Um, uh, it seems like a very long episode. We're in we're an hour. Okay. Um, they had the WWE 2K18 trailer come out with Seth Rollins destroying some of the most important items in wrestling history. Yeah. Very, very cool trailer. Mm -hmm. um, still don't know shit about the video game, so it's a pointless trailer. Uh, there was a follow-up to it, which was Kurt Angle going into the archive. Right. Checking everything out. And goes into a pile of stuff, into a pile of rubble. And not finding his gold medals. Finding one of his boots? I guess it's one of his boots. It was just like a white boot. It was a red, white, and blue one. Yeah. It was definitely his. It's just like, I really I still don't like think that boot would have survived the fire. Well, there's a lot of stuff in there that shouldn't have survived. But why wasn't it the medals? The only thing I can figure is he wouldn't keep the medals at the WWE archive. He'd have those at home. Well, he, he switched. Huh? At, at one point, like, I think he was legitimately using the real ones. Right. And then he, he switched. Oh, sure. I'm sure there's prop ones. Because I think... You know what? It's, it's, all, it's fucking WWE. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking way too much into this. Like, uh, yeah, because like, I think at first he was using the real ones. Probably. They, they had like a, they, they weren't red, white, and blue. The straps. Okay. It was like, it was green with like gold uh, vine patterns and stuff on it. Real. Have you watched uh, the t 24 documentary about him? No. Should. I have, uh, it's very good, very heartbreaking. Gotta watch Westworld first. Um, Gotta watch what? Westworld. Oh. That's how much stuff to watch. <laughs> and I don't get the TV. I don't oh, get to watch yeah. my own fucking TV. We gotta get you a TV. This is my TV. <laughs> <laughs> this is my fucking TV. Well, I come over on Sunday and reclaim it for you. I should just set up that projector in my room. Yeah. It's actually good. You've got idea. white walls. That's true. <laughs> it's a good song, by the way. Macklemore? Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um... Oh, but the thing about that video, though, is the thumbnail should not have been Kurt Angle's face. Yeah. 
Because you. That's the thing now, though. Like you reveal the, the the twist or whatever in the thumbnail or the title or. Yeah. It's annoying. I need to get M Night Shyamalan on this shit. I'm gonna transcribe this whole podcast and put it as a title. <laughs> <laughs> the longest title ever. Yeah. Yeah, not a good idea. I tell you what, though, this is not going to be the longest podcast ever because we're done. Oh, good. Unless you've got something else. It's bedtime. It is bedtime. I'm going to bed. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this podcast. You can find it on iTunes. You can find it on SoundCloud. You can find it on other things. Stitcher. Um, They fixed it. Good. You can also find it on futurevillains.com. That's F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S.com. I thought about doing that on one of my streams just to keep practicing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Apparently I don't need to. <laughs> um, you can find the podcast there. You can find articles that I post all the time. Um, I'm going to make Brian start posting drone videos. There, it's out there. you got to start doing it. <laughs> i got to get the DVR. I made you your own fucking page. Uh, I'll, I'll show you this video when we're done. It's, okay. It's not entertaining. It doesn't... You've seen drone stuff? It's not entertaining at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, You can find me on Twitter, uh, at Best in the Realm. You can also find me on YouTube and Twitch at the same place. And on Facebook, I'm Best of the Realm Gaming. You are? On Twitter, I'm at Brian25. On Instagram, Brian1138. And on the Future Villains website. Right on the front page. Boom, right there. And uh, I don't remember Brooks's Instagram, but his Twitter is Brooks42. <laughs> right? I think so. Just go on one of our pages. We tweet at him all the time. Yeah. You can find him. Thank you for joining us for this episode that I don't remember the number of, but I think it's 22. 20-something. Yes, yeah, 20-something. So we're getting to 25. We're getting there. Almost there. Almost at a, at a quarter of a million. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us, guys. Till next time, let's stop.